Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some gorgeous leather wrap bracelets. So I'm going to start off with simple, basic, easy little leather wrap bracelets. And we're going to sort of progress from there to slightly more complicated things. Um, we've got a fantastic kit available at the minute uh, if you want to make lots of beautiful leather wrap jewelry. Um, it's the one that we're showing during the little countdown time, obviously. And if you want to get that one, each of the kits makes up to eight projects, depending on which ones you make. Uh, it's got loads of fantastic beads, buttons, thread, everything that you're going to need. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, it makes up to eight. Um, you can make triples, doubles, all sorts of different things. Plus, we have a bonus pattern, uh, which you'll get for free if you want to purchase that one. And it's 20% off. Actually, it's over 20% off. So a really good bargain if you want to get that one this week. Um, it's going to be on sale for until the 11th, I think it is. So yeah, if you want to get the kit, make sure you check it out. Uh, but yeah, let's let's have a look at what we can what we can make today. I'll I'll just show you on the bead mat some of the examples of of leather wrap jewelry. In fact, I'm wearing one. It's a great. Uh, unisex style of jewelry because you can wear it as a man or as a woman whatever takes your fancy uh, it's quite a, a popular design especially over like summer and um, spring which we have coming up and even in autumn and winter as well but it's a it's a really really nice little design that you can play with and try things out and sort of make it to your to your liking uh, and see sort of what fantastic things you come up with. Um, I see we've already got lots and lots of people here, um, which is great. Uh, Dana is here, she was nice and early. We've got Nancy, Alicia, Elaine. Uh, Doris is here, Shelly, uh, Peter. We've got Stacy, Donna, Virginia as well. And it looks like Jermaine's watching there too. Uh, but yeah, so let me show you the sorts of things that you can make uh, and then I'll show you what the kit actually has in it because pretty much everything that you can make uh, comes in the kit. So I'll show you here. Let's have a little look. Uh, I've got a few little pieces here and then I'll show you what the, the bonus bracelet looks like too because I think that one's a really cool one. Uh, but anyway, so just having a quick little smidgen of a look. So have a look at our bead mat here. Here we go. <coughs> so yeah, like like this one just here, leather wraps are really, really nice, interesting, and super easy to make bracelets. Uh, of course, you can turn it into a necklace as well if you prefer. Uh, but yeah, you can see, just like this one here, we're going to be using leather as our outside edging, and we're going to put between the two pieces of leather some really beautiful beads. Of course, if you want to, you can very, very easily um, have multiple rows of beads in between. You can just do a single bigger bead if you want to. So you can see there's the difference in sizes. Uh, you can use crystals if that's your your sort of thing there. Uh, so you can see that one's super sparkly. This is from the, the blue colorway. Um, the the forget-me-not it was called uh, that colorway um, and then of course because you get some some uh, hematite cubes as well you can make things like this whether they're double strand or single strand it's up to you but there's a lot of versatility to it and of course um, this one which is a very very popular design which is the big triple cuff piece which uh, if I just pop it onto my wrist there looks uh, something like this. So it's a really substantial, beautiful piece uh, that you can make. And again, like I said, uh, you can sort of make it uh, either a feminine looking one, a masculine looking one. You can go unisex. You can use gemstone. You can use crystal. You can use whatever beads it is that you have to hand, whatever um, sort of takes your fancy. This one's with gemstone, for example. Uh, lots and lots of different uh, things that you could do. Um, for example, um, we've got a little suggestion here. You could use nuts and bolts for a more manly look. Yes, you could do that too. That is a, a really fun idea. Let me just realign that. It seems like I've got that not quite the right size, I think. There we go. Uh, but yeah, no, that's a, a really great idea too, actually. I, I like that suggestion. So, uh, great one there from, well, I don't know what your name is, but, uh, KD Tara Bell. Don't know. 
Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, the suggestion. That is a nice idea as well. Um, uh, let's see. So, um, let me have a look. Ah, this is a name I haven't seen before. Um, hi to Natasha, who's joining us from Holland. Uh, we've got Mary, who's in Iowa. We've got, um, who else have we got? I know we've got a lot of people who are here in the UK, like Jan. She says she loves the forget-me-not color, which is the blue. Um, here we go. So uh, Elaine says, what type of beads do you recommend for the men's leather bracelets? Um, well, I personally really like uh, those sort of earthy toned colored uh, gemstones are nice. Obviously, you can use glass, matte ble beads. You could use like the natural color of hematite. There's a lot of different options that you can use. Um, I guess it's uh, I guess it's it's kind of depends on the person who you're actually making it for. Um, also, if you're going to get the kit, let me just show you. I'll sh well first I'll show you what the kit actually looks like before we get started. So if you have a look, this is what the bead spider website looks like today obviously as always if you want to click that big square that says leather wrap bracelet master kit uh, master class you'll be able to get today's tutorial you'll be able to watch it right there we do also have all three kits available on that page but otherwise if you click the button that says view all related products you can see here is the desert rose color here's the forget me not here's the wild heather which is that purple tone Stock is relatively limited for these, so if you're going to grab one, jump on fairly quickly. Um, and then as it says there in the text, includes bonus free pattern. I'll show you that. Anyway, um, you might also want some split needles. I should have brought one with me so I could demonstrate with it. They are really, really useful just because you can open up the entirety of the needle, like one big giant eye, and put whatever thickness thread you want through it. We've got buttons, leather. Uh, we'll put some extra thread in here. We'll put some beads in here as well, just in case you want to get beads, but you can literally use any beads that you like. I'll show you what the three different kits include um, as well, but let me first show you what the actual bonus project looks like. So, uh, where are we? Here we go. So this one is the bonus pattern that you'll get is how to make this really gorgeous little bracelet here as well. So it's just another usage for your leather. Um, of course, instead of using a big wooden button, you can use any of the, uh, the buttons that you get in your kit. For example, this one is probably my favorite button. I absolutely adore this one and I think it's a really lovely color, hence why I've put it on uh, this piece here and also on this one here just because I, I really like playing with this one We do have another shank button as well, but I'll show you that one in a minute But anyway, you could put that on here But the nice thing is you can either just put it on or because it's a little bit stretchy It will also slide over the top of your hand as well So it's quite a nice little bracelet design uh, and this is going to be your bonus free pattern So if you want you can do it in one color or, which looks really cool as well, especially if you um, mix and match your kit colors, you can even do it in two colors, which looks super cool as well. So I'll just, oops, get that over my wrist so you can sort of see the idea. But yeah, it looks really cool in two colors as well. So it's up to you um, how you want to do it. But if you're getting the kit, you will also get the free bonus pattern on how to make these ones just here, which you could do it as a bracelet or even it makes a really lovely necklace. I've seen a, a, a necklace made with this same design as well, which I thought was super duper cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, as I said, Let's get into the basics on how to actually make these sorts of things. So, <coughs> like I said, it is very, very simple. Um, you can, as you see, you can see the thread here. I think it's entirely up to you, of course, but I think it actually adds a really interesting design feature. So you can see the thread on either side. If you prefer it where you don't see the thread, because it is on here as well, you just go for a thread that matches your leather color. But anyway, I quite like the actual um, sort of effect that you get where you can see the thread on the leather. But I'm going to go for a color today that is very, very easy to see that. Um, I've got a piece of the red leather here, red leather, yellow leather, uh, from, this one is from the, um, 
what was the name of the kit? The Desert Rose kit. Uh, so I'll just show you. I'm going to demonstrate with the purple one, I think. But the, the Desert Rose is definitely my favorite. This, this red leather is absolutely stunning. It's almost got like a, a slight sheen, metallic-y looking sheen to it, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's really, really soft. 1.5 millimeter leather. So I'll just pop along the bottom um, a little ticker with today's materials in it so you can have a little read while I'm uh, while I'm sort of showing you these things but essentially what we're going to do is create a nice little bracelet which I'll do sort of multiple sizes you can do mix and match your beads whatever it is that you want to do uh, it's up to you but I'm going to essentially cut myself a piece of leather here's the uh, the purple that I've got and we thread to the middle of our leather, depending on if you want to do a single length bracelet that will go round your wrist just once, like this for example. You'd probably need about 50 centimeters of, of your leather, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, otherwise, if you want to do a double wrap like the one that I'm wearing just here, you need to pretty much have double the amount of leather. Um, so something more like <coughs> maybe a meter and ten centimeters a meter meter and ten something close to that sort of uh length there um but yeah so uh, i'm going to use this little piece of leather i cut myself just one for a single piece just here and what i will do is i've threaded on one of my knee uh buttons here because you get in your kit you get plenty of these super cute little buttons which are the same as what i've got just on here as well um, but basically uh, you just thread this to the middle of your piece of leather so I cut myself a single piece brought it to the middle and then you just tie a knot at the bottom so I'll give you a quick little showing on how I did this knot I've got a couple of knots I'll try and show you throughout the the day but essentially this little knot here I'll undo it you can see the the leather is very forgiving uh, you just bring your button nicely to the center of your leather so that your tails match each other. And then let's just show you the knot. It's very, very simple. You just go around your finger and up through the loop that you've just created. So a very, very basic standard knot. And if you can just very, very slowly, you slide it down towards your button, try and keep it as neat as you possibly can so that the two different pieces of leather don't get too crossed over because you want it to be as neat as you can get it and try and slide it nice and close to that button and then just pull it nice and firm until it sits beautifully at the base of your button. So there you go. That just secures your little button piece there and it sort of keeps it nice and straight towards the back uh, so that it will sit really easily and gives us something that we can sort of work against. Now I also have with me a macrame board just because I find that it's a nice easy way to sort of pin you, your, your work down so that you can work on it really easily. You can use a macrame board, but you don't have to. You can, of course, also use something more like, uh, just like a, a bead mat and pin it to your bead mat. If you've got like a tray, you can put, uh, you can sticky tape it to a tray. But essentially what I'm going to do today is just use my little macrame board here, pop the little end with the button inside here. Uh, in a second I will at least. Once I've got myself a bit started, uh, I'll, I'll do that. But anyway, I'll just pop the other end into the bottom and then we'll, we'll sort of continue on. So first thing, I am going to put it in here to secure it and then I'm going to bring in two pieces of thread because essentially that's how we're going to make our little piece is with one uh, very long piece just here. Uh, here we have uh, Shelly says, I use a clipboard. Yes, a clipboard will work perfectly as well, if not even better, because you can just put that little clip slate, uh, straight underneath the button and then you can just start working with it straight away. So uh, a great suggestion there from Shelly uh, as well. Um, 
But yeah, so once you've got your thread, we, of course, in your, your little kit, we give you one of these little spools just here so that you can, of course, make uh, your, your little pieces. This is the, the color that I've got just here in uh, this, this purple tone. Uh, so I've already cut myself a piece. You want to use probably about two meters or so, and we stick a needle on both ends. This is why a, um, a what are they called? A split needle is really, really handy to use just because it looks, uh, it, it makes it so easy to get on and off of your thread if you ever need to undo anything. Um, because the thread is a little bit thicker. Uh, if you use a split needle, which I'm not, obviously you can just use a standard beading needle, same as the one I've got just here. You just thread straight through your eye, but obviously the, the, the split needle does make the process of threading super duper easy. So um, I've, got, I've got a selection of beads, which I'll start with, I think I'll start with the gemstone. I'll show you the ones that I've got to choose from. Uh, clearly the camera looks a little bit dark because of the the white on the on the mat so I'll just zoom out and hope that the brightness will come up in a second but anyway I'll show you some of the beads that you get so we give you a strand of gemstones we give you a strand of crystals as well you also get some really lovely six millimeter aurora crystals which wait let's take them off the bead mat for a second so you can really see what they actually look like uh, see how much brightens up there. I should put the exposure lock on. Uh, but yeah, we also have some of these, which I absolutely adore. They look like bubbles, I think. Uh, these are our 6 mil Aurora crystals. Um, you've also got some of these little beads here as well, which they are aluminium. Uh, they're diamond cut aluminium beads. So I'll show you what they look like too. They're, they're pretty spectacular little beads that we've got here as well. And of course you can mix them and match them and do whatever you want with them. Uh, and you just play around with the design. So see them there, they're all little uh, hollow pieces of, uh, hollow balls of aluminium and then they've got this marquisite on the surface and then diamond cut flat surfaces cut into them to make them look really interesting and sparkly and sort of catch the light. So these um, these beads come in all three of the different color options, but essentially these are the beads that are in my purple option. Uh, the blue has, uh, so essentially each kit has a gemstone, a crystal, and then the aurora crystals that look like bubbles as well. Uh, so the, uh, the desert gold, which I think I'll show you that a bit later, um, has some really lovely beads. I think the the the, the goldy color is is probably my my favorite of of the two. The leather is such a lovely color for both, but also um, you've got all those same beads. But there's some really lovely. I'll get them out later. I'll get them out later. But anyway, I'm going to start. I think with my my gemstone. I think that'll be quite a nice little design. Uh, grab my scissors and give them a cut, or maybe I'll just undo the knot at the top here. Um, hi to Charlotte, by the way. She's uh, joined us not long ago now. Uh, she's just commented in and said hello. So I'll get myself a few of these little beads out. I might stick them on my little sort tray, of course, just to keep them sort of handy where I need them. Pop some of those there. I'll get some of the others out too, actually. Do you know what? Because it's always fun to play. But anyway, I'll start with just one bead for now to keep it simple. So we need to use our thread and our macrame board and whichever it is. We've got our beads attached. So the first thing that we're going to do is attach our thread to this and sort of lock that first bead at the very, very, very top. Um, so if I pick up one of my little gemstone beads just here, and I'll just thread through it with one needle for now, and I'll bring it down to the middle of my, my working thread here. So there you go. You can see I've just pulled it all the way nicely to the middle of my thread. What I'll do is essentially go underneath each thread. I'll go one at a time. Actually, we'll take this one this side. I've got a few things on the table which are just catching, but anyway. So I'll go to take this one under this side. And pull it this way. Come on now. Here we go. Once I get myself started, it will become much easier. 
And then I'll take this one underneath as well. So that both threads are underneath. It doesn't matter if it's all the way down here in the middle. We're going to tighten it up in a bit. But essentially what we're going to do on this very first bead is sort of cross back over and put it into the um, into the center here. Uh, Nancy's just asked, are the beads all 6 mil? No, they're not. Um, the gemstones like this one are 4 millimeter. Same with the crystals. They're 4 millimeter. Uh, the, the big... Uh, the Aurora Crystals, these little bubbly looking ones, and the Aluminium uh, Diamond Cutter million Aluminium ones, they're 6mm. Uh, but the, the other two are 4mm. Um, also, uh, in terms of the thread, I'm using a size 3 embroidery thread, because I see that's just come in as a question. So I'll just do uh, a little trick just here, where essentially I'm going to go see how I'm going underneath the leather with my first piece of thread. I'll zoom in so you can see it a little better. Hopefully the the white of this of this won't make the video too difficult to see, but anyway, it's making it dark for some reason. I'll see if I can do something about that. No. Oh well, I'll see what I can do. I might have to fiddle with the, the brightness a bit. Uh, but anyway, so with my thread going underneath, I'm going to bring this thread back through this needle over the through that central bead and then underneath the piece of leather there so see that over the top of this leather through the bead and under this one i'll pull it through so that it's fairly tight but not hugely tight for now just get it nice and pulled and then i'll do the same with the second thread so this one here again let's take it through here try and rub along the top of the bead so i don't pierce my my threads or anything oops and then underneath this second piece of leather just like that there and what I'm gonna do is just pull it all the way through like so and oops so you can see like this it's relatively secured just here but I'm gonna make it more secure so I'll just slide this little bead all the way up to the knot at the top here so as close as I can get it so obviously if it loosens a little that's perfectly fine uh, because we want it to be able to slide as we go so just sort of ease it up ease it up ease it up all the way till we reach the very very top of our work and then we'll just pull it whoops try and keep it nicely in the center there and then we'll pull each side nice and tight oh am i still in shot yep pull each side nice and tight until we've got that really clean finish of it sitting in the center which it can be a little difficult to get started which uh, that clipboard method is uh, a good a good little thought um, otherwise you can use like a, a pin on your your top here so I'll even use like a, an extra needle and just sort of stick the needle into my macrame board just here to sort of hold the leather temporarily while I do this and then I'll just bring it up to the top all the way as far as I can get it to go try and get it nice and neatly into that gap both all the way up there we go until it's nicely nice and close to that little end if you get it too close to the end it can be a little bit um, sort of too tight if you know what I mean so we want to try and keep it um, a little bit away from the knot just so that it's got the ability to move around uh, so you can see like on the one I'm wearing just here see you leave that little gap so that you've still got a bit of movement when you're when you're wearing your your piece of jewelry so now that that's fairly nicely up there i'll even go back through the bead once more which i'll try and just get just one side maybe both through and you can just cross them over so because the thread's gone from underneath again whoops just got a bit caught there so the thread is going from over the top and around the leather once more to get it 
trying and sitting nicely. Should have given my thread a little waxing, but I didn't bring any with me, unfortunately. So just unravel that, pull that through, and get it nicely up the top. Again, oops, just, there we go. Pull it all the way through. Come on now, behave. And then we'll do the same with our other thread. We just take it through the bead underneath and all the way through so that we're coming out both threads on opposite sides. Get it nice and firm. Ugh, of course, my thread's being a pain in the bum. Misbehaving, of course, as always. Doesn't want to pull all the way through this little side just here. There we go. Let's just get that uncaught and then we'll hopefully be able to just pull it all the way through now there we go much better now we're much cleaner so again i'll just slide that nicely up to the very very top of my work pull it tight and then make sure both threads are underneath the leather oops sorry there we go you'll see that there now here we go. So both threads are now underneath the leather. I've got that first bead in place. In fact, I'll just pin it to the board through this little knot at the top so that it's in place while I do these first few beads. Oops. There we go. Just use that needle as a pin. There we go. And now I'll tighten the two bottom ones down here. There we go, just zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And there, we've got our first little bead sitting in there nicely. And we'll just continue adding a couple more in the same way. So we had to go through this one a couple of times to get it really secured. But then um, we can sort of continue on from there, just adding bead by bead by bead, just in exactly the same way. So because we're coming from underneath the thread, I'll start with the thread on this left side. And I'll just go through my bead. And because I'm already going underneath the leather here, I can just go over the top and under this second piece of leather here. So try and keep that bead on the inside there. Once I've done a few beads, it becomes, as with many things in jewelry making, once you've done a couple of beads, it becomes much, much easier to, to work with. So this one will just go underneath like this. This one, the other thread, which is this one up here is just going to, again, do exactly the same thing. Let's just get this second thread out of the way, of course. Uh, and then we're going to take our second thread here through the little piece. It's got my threads in a bit of a tangle here, of course. I tell you, it's one of those days, it seems. Just get this under here. Oops. There we go. So now I'll just go over the top of this piece of leather here through that little bead as well. Pull it tight and then I'll go underneath this piece of leather here. So as I pull it tight, this little piece will come all the way through. Again, it doesn't matter if they're not all the way tight just yet. They will become tight as we pull it together. So just pop that down there, pull that tight. And there, you can see it's now sort of in position. I'll zoom in so you can see. In position so that it's not going to move. So really, really easy to just attach each one like that. You can, of course, if you want to really secure them in, go through each of the beads again. So I'll just do that very, very quickly, just to sort of show you what happens. So I'll go again over the top of the thread uh, of the leather, through that bead and under. And let's just keep our finger on it so that the bead will stay in place. Oops. Just saw this little thread out. Need to untwist it, I think. Pull you all the way in. There we go. So that's that side is going to be fairly nicely secured. Just bring this thread out of the way. Take my other one over the top here, through this bead, 
as well. And then I'll go underneath the leather with this one too. So I'll just come through a little bit and then I'll just go underneath the leather down here somewhere, under there, and then pull that one all the way through and just give them a nice pull firmly so that it's super duper firm and now it's not going to move anywhere, it's not going anywhere, it's going to sit really really neatly right there as close as you can get it to that other bead. See that? They're pretty much touching and then you just repeat it again more or less. So let's do another one. Oops, just knocked my microphone there. Um, hi to Donna by the way who just says uh, she's just joined us, she's here from the US uh, so welcome. Um, here we go. Quite a few people um, here. And apparently Wayne's made a good suggestion. Here we go. Ah, yes. Here, uh, here we go. If you... If you tuck the other end of the leather... Yes, I do have that. Uh, when we put something between the leather and the board, it will raise it enough just to get the beads uh, over and under nice and easily. Well, that is a very, very good suggestion. You can just use like maybe a, a small pen under either end uh, just to really sort of keep that firm if you wanted to. That's a good suggestion there from, from Wayne. Almost like a, a, like a little um, guitar, like the neck of a guitar. That was what Jan Alston sort of said about that. So yes, again, we'll do exactly the same. So I'll take this bead and I'm gonna go underneath this piece of leather here. Pull that all the way through. And I'll just take my second needle now. Oops, make sure it stays underneath my previous one. Got myself a bit caught, I seem. Just take you back out through here. Here we go. Here we go. Pop that there. And now this second piece of leather, we want it to go underneath here over the top of this leather and under the second side. So pull that through. Doesn't matter if the bead gets a little bit out of shape because it will come together in just a second when we pull both threads tight. This is the, the most satisfying part about these sort of jewelry is that as you pull the thread tight, they just pop ever so nice and neatly into position. So see that? Really neat, really easy to get them in position. Once you're through, it's uh, smooth sailing. So I'll just, I need to move my camera, I think. It's just a fraction too far up the table. There we go. Because I'm battling with the with trying to keep the, the macrame board balanced on the edge of the table. That will definitely help. Um, so yeah, essentially, as Donna has noted, we're essentially doing a figure of eight around our two threads, slaloming back and forth around our threads to sort of get it to sit really nice and neatly. So uh, nicely spotted there by Donna. Um, so let's do our next bead, shall we? So we'll just pick up one more bead. Again, see it sits there nicely in the middle. We'll go underneath this thread here. Doesn't matter if the bead comes out, don't worry, we can put it back later. Keep this one over here, go over the top, because we've got our, we're, we're already underneath the leather here, so we'll go over the top of this one and underneath the second. So just like that there. And then pull it all the way through, and then like just before, you can give this previous one a little tug, which this is why, see how uh, I went through the previous one twice, but this one I only went through once. This is something that can happen, is that it gets a little bit loose, but that's no problem because obviously when you pull your thread, it will come nice and tight again. You just might have to, to do it a couple of times to, to get everything firm. That's why if you want to go through the beads twice, they do sort of sit really, really firm and nice. Um, uh, at the at the sides there and the beads sort of lock in place and then they stay in position So I'll show you again Just by going through once only the once which is I think fine So I'll just take my thread through another bead and I'll go underneath 
the leather, so over the top of this leather, underneath the second leather. And then we'll do it a second time. And then I'll show you something that's slightly different. So just a fraction different. It's almost the same, but only a fraction different. So I'll take my second needle now, which is caught on my other piece of thread, which I was going to show you a bit later. Let's get that out of the way. There we go. So now we'll go over the top of this piece of leather, through the bead, and then underneath the next piece of leather. See that? So it's super easy. Over the top of this one, through there, under that one there. Also, something I should point out is it's important to try and use a really good quality thread for this, um, for this process because obviously you don't want your thread to deteriorate or sort of um, get hairy or furry or anything. So you want to try and make sure uh, that you use a good quality thread when you're doing this just so that it stays super secure and doesn't sort of start dying before it's time. So now that I've got that first one done, do you know what? I'm going to show you a little something which is quite fun, which you can do this at any point. Like I said, bead, bead soup someone suggested, which is exactly accurate. Um, you can do this so that you're going back and forth, back and forth, but you don't have to do just one bead. If you want to, you can, of course, do multiples. So I'll show you it. Do you know what? Shall we try it with some some crystals, because we can mix and match our beads as much as we like uh, to do whatever we fancy with them. So uh, maybe I'll I'll even show you uh, with some crystals too uh, how that's going to, to look. So if I just, here we go. Oh yeah, now that I've done uh, a few beads, I can stick my head of my needle into the macrame board now, just to make life a little bit easier for me. So stick that knot in there. Hopefully, it will stay inside my macrame board. And while I'm working, it will stay nice and close to the mat and easy and firm to work with. Because again, you do want it nice and firm together so that it's easy to work with. That's sort of the, the important thing, is trying to keep everything tight so it stays tight. You make it tight and it will stay tight. Um, Elaine says, "Would fire line work? Yes, you can. You can use whatever you can use whatever thread. You can use you can use um, like a, a fishing line even if you wanted to. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You can do different thickness of leather. You can do thicker. You can do thinner. It's it's a really versatile design for doing a lot of different things. So anyway, I'll show you what happens now if we do it with two beads. So it's pretty much identical. We'll pick up two beads this time now. So two on my needle." I'll thread them down and I'll go one needle, so over the top of this and underneath the second piece of leather. And that's going to just sort of widen things a little bit, which is fine, which is good, which is what we want. And it sort of allows you to give it this sort of in and out looking effect. So I'll just widen my two pieces of leather at the bottom. Pop that fella back in there. In you get. There we go. Pop that fella in there. Ugh, does not want to happen for me. I need to do a few more beads, I think, before it will go in there properly. There we go. Uh, so now that I've got two beads, and try and keep them in the middle. One. And get the second one on there too. We do the same thing with our second thread. So I'll just bring in my other thread here. And we go over the top of the leather here. Just take that through there. So yeah, we go over the top of the leather, just like we always do. Doesn't matter if it's a bit further down. So see how I've got it all the way up here and this is down here, it doesn't matter because it will tighten at the end. So go through both beads. Doesn't matter if they're above the leather or below it or whatever, because as long as you go over the top of the leather and then take the needle under, the figure of eight when you pull it tight will make sure everything just comes into position as you want it to. 
So I'll pull that all the way through. And as I pull it nice and tight, you can see it will just position nicely at the top there like this. And see that? You can pull that nice and tight. And do you know what? I'll just to secure these two beads in, I'm going to go through both of them again. So I'll take my needle through them both with one side. Try and keep them nicely in position. Don't let you get don't let your thread get all tangled because that's less than ideal. Just keep my finger in there. I'll, I'll unravel this thread, I think, in a second. There we go. That in there. And now we take our other one. Uh, or, uh, sorry, I'll take it underneath my leather so that it's going to be in position when I do my next step. You always want to make sure that you go underneath the leather to finish your step. Take that there. Take this one over the top. Get it sort of in position. Yeah, it's coming from underneath. You can see. See, here it is. It's underneath. And then it goes over the top. So over this piece of leather. Again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's not quite firm yet. It will be. So go under the leather, pull it tight, all the way through. There we go. And now I'll just line it up and pull them both nice and firm to sit perfectly at the top there. And you can see that's going to make that really really firm and nice and neat and everything and looking really really good and so once i've got two beads i can i can i can play around with that effect so i can keep going um oh yeah this is uh, another good suggestion you can also use a loop of thread on the macrame board to insert the button into yes uh that is uh something i i did know already and had completely forgotten i'd even made myself a loop of thread to do it with uh, so thank you for reminding me, Wayne. I'd completely forgotten that I'd done that. Uh, there we go. So I'll pop that. That is a, a much better idea. Thank you for reminding me, Wayne. Uh, there we go. Let's just pop that little loop of thread inside there. And hold that little button in place. There we go. Just pull that through. So yeah, like Wayne just suggested. There we go. Now I've got my little piece of thread holding everything in place. And I can pull my two threads down nice and tight. Give this a good yank. There we go. And now everything is really easy to get nice and firm. So just pull that a little tighter as well. And of course, if you've got your threads just that fraction tighter, which I guess during the transition, you should just go through that last bead once more so that it stays nice and firm. Because you want to try and pull, 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 pull to get a really good tight tension around those little beads. And let's do our next one, shall we? So I'll I'll use some, some crystals now, just for fun. Do you know, I could have transitioned using a 6mm bead. That could have been a cool idea. Oh well, too late now. Um, but yeah, you can just keep going wider and thinner and wider and thinner, however it is that you fancy as many beads as you like even. So let's get some crystals going, I think. Just put these in here. So, a couple of crystals. I'll just take two of them for now. So I'll take my left thread here. And pick up one, then two. Thread that down. Take that through here. And then of course, underneath the leather. So pull that through. Take my second thread, exactly the same. So there's, there's, there's absolutely no difference at all in doing it this way. Just pull that a little tighter. There we go. And I'll take my second needle through those beads. Same beads, but in the opposite direction. And then underneath the leather. So through there, under the leather. Pull it all the way through, which if you pop your fingers on top of the beads, they sit nicely sort of where you're working. 
and we can slide them up into position and they'll just lock there nicely as well which again if you want to you can sort of tighten those uh, threads but those beads by going through them again if that's uh, comfortable for you otherwise not necessary in the slightest where's my little loop of thread going there we go so yeah that's that's going to give me a couple of crystals so i'll even do a little bit more uh let's do let's do a couple more crystals shall we so you can use seed beads in this if you want to um and just sort of continue ah there's a question here ha elaine says how do you attach a new thread if you run out well elaine uh what you can do is just wrap around the edge tie off a thread here just tie it into this little bit you can even do a little uh, knot into the center weave back to it and then you do the same on the other side bring in a new thread and just continue on with this a new piece uh, in the same way so you can sort of either use a weavers knot to attach them maybe but I don't think that will work too well in this instance but weaving in a brand new thread I think will work much much better so there we go let's do our next one And we'll go through here, go down, down, under the leather, and pull that nice and tight. Just got caught, I think, on my crystals. Yep, there we go. My little string of crystals I've got just off shot there. Oh, there we go. Pull that, pull this, and then again, that very satisfying little tug, and it comes together nicely. It's a very, very easy little method there. Just, okay, let's pull this down to get firm. There we go. There we go. And pull. Nice and firm. There we go. And do you know what? Let's go back to doing gemstones. Or you could do one of each if you wanted to. You could do a crystal on one side, a gemstone on the other. But yeah, if you go through them twice, of course, they will sort of sit nicely. It's up to you. Uh, how many times you go through the beads it's it's you know it's a it's a free form art as it were so that you've got um creativity to you creative license to change it as you want um you know sort of see how you what takes your fancy what you prefer what you can come up with um so let's just do the same process again and then I'm going to do, I think I might even do like a three bead type thing, or, or maybe I'll use some of my even bigger beads. And we'll just keep going wider, because you can keep going wider and wider and wider if you want to. Um, you know, whatever works for you, whatever you like. In fact, because I'm going to go wider, I'll just re-secure these beads once more. Which here's a fun little tip, because I'm using a macrame board to keep the threads nice and tight while I'm working, I can just stick one side in this the other side in this side and now i'm sort of free to to play so let's get two of my aurora crystals i think i might use these these could be fun i told you i'm just playing with a little bit of everything i've got a bit of everything so why not use a bit of everything eh so here we go here are my couple of aurora crystals there's those those couple of bubble looking ones use them so i'll pop them in next so I'll take my left thread and I'll go through there once and through the other one and because this one is going to be just that little bit larger it's the same as doing three beads even I guess you could do um, you know slightly smaller if you wanted to or maybe even try it with with three of the purple beads do you know what let's 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 try that like I said it's got my I've got my own sort of design to play with. So let's go with actually a couple more purple ones. I'll go with three purples and see how that looks instead. So let's go one, two, three little purple gemstones. Slide it down. And then I'll go under this. So over this leather, under this leather, pull it in. And you can see once I'm ready to use it, I can just unpop it from the on, from the side, and it's not going to be in my way or anything. Pop that inside there, let it sit loose for now because that's perfectly fine. 
And now I'll just grab my second thread and I'll come through those same three beads back in the other direction, pull them all the way through. Keep undoing it, there we go. And now I'll just take this underneath, oh wait, let's hope the camera's gonna be misbehaving. Uh-oh, wait a second. I think my USB cable's come undone. Wait a sec, gotta fix the camera. Don't want it to die. Where are you? Here we go. We're going all the way down to Let's pop it. Ooh, where's my camera gone? Ooh. Here we go. I hope I hope the camera hasn't died. Okay, one second. Did it survive? Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a disaster there. That would have been a problem if the camera battery had died. Uh, yes. Uh, so, let's keep going now. <laughs> uh, that's good fun. Um, where was I? Here we go. So, I need to take this underneath this piece of leather here. And then I can just pull this second thread all the way tight. And... With three beads now, we'll just lock it in place. There you go. And there it is again. You can see it's just that little bit tighter. Maybe I should have gone through this one again as well. Oh well. See, obviously you do get a better effect if you go through the beads more tightly. They sort of sit neater. Unless you prefer the leather being kind of straighter. It's much of a muchness, really. I guess it's a personal preference thing. If you want the leather to hug the sides a bit closer, or if you prefer them sort of being straight aligned, maybe it's uh, up to you. Um, right, so now I might go with the two of these, because this is the same width, because these are four mil and these are six. So two six mil beads or three four mil beads, it's the same width, the same 12 mil millimeter width. So I'll just thread that in there. And they come together pretty quickly, these things, which is which is fun. Uh, they don't take too long to make. Like you can see this little bracelet, especially as I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger as I do it, uh, is coming together quite quickly, actually, which is which is good, which is what we want. So I'll take this one through this, and then again through the bigger beads here. And underneath there. You can sort of just play with the design. I mean, I could have just kept it all the one length and did them all four mil, kind of like my, my one here, which this is very zoomed in. Uh, you can keep it sort of like that if you want to, but I kind of like doing this getting bigger thing. It's, it's kind of looking good. It's, it's fun. Right. I might go through these ones once more just to be extra secure. And if it's easier for you, you can sort of do it the opposite, where you're, instead of going from under the leather, you're going sort of over it and things. But it's again, it's a personal preference on how you prefer it. So let's take this under here. And I'll just move this up a little so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Take my second thread. And let's secure this one again. So... Pull this nice and tight so that they sit both firmly. And then, no, it's this one I need here. Through those two there. And under the leather. Let's get it nice and tight. Pull both threads super firm. Pull this one a little tighter. Pull this one nice and tight. Pull that one tight. And get them as firm as you can get them. And that just locks everything in again. So let's continue again. I'll do I'll do three more gemstones, shall I? And then maybe I'll do three of my bicones and I don't know. Or, or even I could do four if I wanted to in a bit. And just sort of keep working upwards and outwards and inwards and until you're sort of like at a point where you're like, do you know what, now's the time to start going back in. So once you've got it sort of half the length of your wrist, you can just start easing it back inwards uh, the same way as we went outwards. So 
Maybe I'll do... Let's see, here we go. Pop a few more beads in here. And you know what? We could pretend, obviously, this is only a very, very small bracelet thus far. But if you... Uh-oh. Cable's a bit loose. Don't know why it's doing this to me. Let's hope that's going to stay. Yeah, that seems all right now. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, I've only made a very, very small piece. If you made it so that it was half the length of your wrist, you can then sort of start graduating it back down in the same way. So I'll do, I'll do, I'll, I'll show you how that would work um, as well. So I'll do my, I'll do a reduction, even though it's a little bit early, I'll do one more and then I'll do a reduction just so it looks kind of even. And I'll bring this thread in, I'll go one, two, three, over the top there and pull that tight tightish is enough for now there we go through there bring in your second needle through all three beads And then under the leather. So you just keep repeating, 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 repeating until you've got your bracelet the full length that you want it to be. So let's just pull this all the way through. And this three bead is actually looking really good, I think. I really like the 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 width of three beads. I think it's looking really nice. And these little ball, uh, beads here at the top look spectacular. I think they're looking great, actually. Happy with that. So we'll go three, maybe I'll do another three. Nah, let's bring it down. I'll bring it down just so that you can, we can get on with the tutorial rather than, I'm, I'm playing. You're just watching me play, I suppose. But uh, let's just bring it downwards again. So exactly the same as the way that we went up. You just pick up two beads now, for example. Go over the top. And underneath the leather here. Take this one, go over the top of the leather, through the beads and under the leather. And then just pull your thread all the way tight. Until it's nicely in position again, which I'll just bring my two leathers ever so slightly together on the mat so that they will begin to want to come into that smaller size as I do it. So let's just pull that there and I can even go through these beads once more to get it even tighter if I wanted to just to sort of get it. I mean it doesn't really go too tight here but maybe I'll do it on this one anyway just to see how it looks. It's all very easy and fun to sort of just play with this design. Uh, it's not it's not too complicated and, and you're quite free to experiment with things and just try them out and see what happens, you know? Uh, it's what makes it a lot of fun to do is one, it's quick, two, it's easy, and three, it's really easy to experiment. So there we go. So look, you can see, you can do it if you wanted to, so that it really comes in much quicker and closer to the to the to the uh, the thread. The the leather sort of comes right in much quicker if you wanted it to, rather than that gradual sort of thing. If you want it tighter, you can see it will go tighter as well. And just it's like I said, a a matter of personal preference as to how you prefer it to look. So then you can just keep sort of doing a few more, which let's do some more bicones just to sort of make it match the opposite side. So one and two bicones, which I like using the crystals as well. They're nice. And go under the leather. Oops. Through there. 
and where am I? Under that little piece there. Ah, oh, I've just realised I, I wasn't underneath. I hadn't gone underneath this one yet. So you've got to make sure. This is why, this is what happens if you don't go underneath the leather. See this, how it's a bit loose now? So the easy thing is, just take it back through. And put this here. Take this underneath. There we go. Now my thread is back underneath. Because you've got to make sure that's how you start. Threads underneath. See, um, over the top and under the other leather there. And then pull that one tight. There we go. And then we'll do the same with our second needle. Make sure it's under the leather. Go over the top and under that next piece there. So then just pull it all the way through. But of course, the thing with this one is spending time to make it look exactly the way that you want it to, so that it's nice and tight, nice and firm, looking good, all of those sorts of things. That's sort of where you want to spend your time is perfecting it so that it sees, uh, you see exactly what it is that uh, you think looks best, but just try and get it neat. Because like with this one, once you get them really tight and you figure out your, your tension, you can see you can get a fabulous tension and they sit really beautifully uh, once you've got that firm tension. Um, and again, of course, uh, with the smaller beads, like for example, um, where's the red one? Here we go. So you can see this one as well has like quite a nice firm tension so that nothing moves, but of course the, the, the thread on the outside uh, gives you that beautiful effect all the way down, which I think looks really, really cool as well. But yeah, once you've... So you can see I've done quite a lot where there's doubles and singles, which I should have just picked one and stuck with it, but I guess for the sake of speeding up, I was trying to show you both. So if you want to make sure you sort of stick with one or the other so that it stays consistent. So if you're going to go through it twice, always go through twice. If you're going to go through it once, always go through it once, um, whichever is your preference. But pick one and stick to it. But there, you can see the difference between the two. You can also line the threads up again. It takes more than, no more than a second to, to sort of fiddle them to be close to each other so that they look a bit neater. But yeah, pick, pick if you want to do them double or if you want to do them single, do them that way and then stick with it. Uh, rather than sort of mixing and matching like I have done. But this, this, this way you can see the difference, more or less. So that's what I was hoping you would be able to see. Um, but yeah, once you've kind of done this, like I said, you can widen and thin, wide, thin, wide, thin, however it is you, you prefer. Um, you can also, let's just, where have I popped my needle? we go. You can also do uh, really long pieces like this one that go round a couple of times. But see with this one here, essentially what you do, you create your first little piece by, well, I'll show you with some red leather. We have, luckily for you, uh, which I'll get Jermaine to put the link in the comments. We have a full video done by Jermaine. I think it's one of our most popular ones on our website for how to make these this exact bracelet. So you can watch the full tutorial of how to make this little fella just here, which this one is from the blue colorway, by the way, because the way that we've done it is that you can make lots of different ones with your cubes or whatever it is that you fancy. But anyway, the, the full video... Um, does cover how to make this beautiful little design. But essentially what you do is you have your two pieces of leather and you make yourself a nice little loop, one single one like this, and then you sort of embellish the outside by doing those outer pieces again afterwards. So <coughs> it's a, a very, very easy way of making this is that you sort of do the center first. So if you were using, for example, these lovely beads down the center, if you wanted to make that into a triple, what you can do 
is essentially you bring in a new piece of leather. So imagine there's no button on there just yet. But essentially what you'll do is bring in a new piece of leather and then make sure it's the right sort of size for what you need. And you lay it beside like that. And then you start adding beads into that gap. So if I show you approximately with my mat, if you were to do that, you can just use one very, very long piece of, of your leather here so that it creates this, where did I just put that bracelet? There it is. If I take it out, you'll see this long loop piece at the end. And so that gives you something that you can sort of attach your button inside of. See that there? So all the way around, you've done your central piece down the middle, like that. You just sort of start there, leaving this loop at the end, at the very beginning. And then you just weave the exact same way all the way down this edge, around the top, all the way back. Um, Kaylee says, "Are there? Is there a kit for these?" Yes. Uh, if you click the link that's in the description, you'll see there's three different ones uh, that we have. But yeah, this one uh, would make for a, it, it's a little bit chunky, so it's a, a really nice sort of interesting piece for more of a feature. Where these ones, the good thing is, you can sort of stack them if you wanted to. Uh, you can do them lots and lots of different ways. There's a lot of ways to play with them when when it comes to wearing. Uh, quite popular is to stack multiples together. See, look, you can you can have like a whole wrist full of them if you wanted to, like this sort of thing here. Uh, and then you just sort of play with your designs, play with your beads, play with the effects that you like. Use some of those cubic shapes ones that we're going to give you we give you a color some cube ones as well so that you can make this sort of pattern as well if you wanted to um, you know you just sort of play around with what you've got and what you want to do and and sort of do all those sorts of things I'll show you how now to finish the actual piece off so I know I have only made a very very small mini one I'll just shrink it down to be just one, and then I'll show you how you finish it off into a single piece, because obviously you want to know how to do that. It's sort of a, a very, very easy process, but let's just go through it. So I'll shrink this down to just one, because I started with one. It's not going to look symmetrical, but I don't care. That way I can show you rather than, so that you learn the techniques rather than the, uh, the actual finish thing. Uh, I think Jermaine's, hopefully looking for the link of that video. Uh, it is on our website, it's on our YouTube channel as well, so um, hopefully they're gonna pop that little video link for the triple, because you can just watch the whole video uh, from beginning to end, and if you get that kit, of course, uh, you'd be able to make a couple of these. Um, but yeah, I'll, in fact, I can probably show you where the video might be. In fact, I'll even put it on the page. That's probably a nice, easy way. But yeah, if uh, if you're watching, Jermaine, if you can find the link from YouTube and pop it onto uh, into the comments there on on Facebook and on YouTube, you can you can jump over and watch that when the stream's over um, as well. Which I'll put it on that page on the website too, so that it's nice and easy to find. Um, I just realised I need to re-thread one of my needles. Which just give me a second. Come on now. Misbehaving, of course. Whenever it's live. I get it first go, I got it first go when I started, and now that I'm doing a stream, of course, it's not wanting to play. There we go. So I'll do that last little bead. Go through there. Jermaine doesn't find that link, I'll find it for you in a second. Underneath. Pull this tight. 
and that's gonna lock this little fella in there we go so we'll just pull that down get that firm and do it maybe one or two more just so that you've got the gist and then I'll finish it off so I know this is a very wonky looking um, well non-symmetrical bracelet because I haven't matched the two sides to each other but we're going for showing many things rather than making just one thing that looks uh, fully finished this one's gonna be a bit different I guess so we'll go through that through here pull it all the way through make sure it's underneath pull 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 nice and tight and then to finish it off I'll go through this one same bead once in this direction The other thread in the other direction. But yeah, it's it's really fun that you can sort of make this anywhere, just as long as you've got like a little clipboard, it's it's super easy. And there you can see I've sort of as I've done that a little tighter, you can see my thread is pretty much in position where I can sort of tie it off, as it were, uh, quite easily by if I just go take this underneath so that that's where it should be you can sort of tie it around this little section here so between here you can tie a knot so that will just go through there and that sort of creates the first little knot but it's a really clean little knot if you do it that way then I'll go back underneath and into here and then again I'll pull it tight because it's better if you tie your knot against this little loop here so under this little loop next to the, the bead and then into the loop here so that the knot will sit more closely to this little knot uh, the bead here rather than on top of our leather so much through there and then of course you can you can even weave backwards and do a couple of other knots sort of into your previous one so that you're going sort of in the opposite way now so back over the top of the, the leather and under and then you just repeat the same process with this second needle on the other side so I'll do that just quickly take this going needs to go under the leather that's where it's meant to be pull that through and now yeah I'll go around and underneath this little knot here and then through that loop all that tight and that will just bring that nice and tight there do it once more around this little bit of thread and then through the loop pull it tight and then I'll go over the leather and through this bead again so then it's sort of going back on myself through previous beads ready to continue and then you can tie it again if you want to but then you just cut it off when you're when you're good and ready and that gives you quite a clean neat little finish just like that there and there you go you can see that's going to finish off your threads you can just tie them off cut them off whenever you're ready I'll leave these ones for now ah because you you can do like one knot and then cut it sort of thing um tie a knot on this side pass through the bead and then cut it on the other side of the bead if you know what i mean um yeah kaylee's just had a suggestion 
Could you use this for a bookmark or a key ring? Well, do you know what? The one that I've made, if I took this, if I'd done it with like a, a little key ring piece instead, uh, yeah, you could use it as a bookmark, you could use it as a key ring, whatever it is that you that you fancy. That's a, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can do these, these different sorts of um, uh, easy ways to, to use it. It's versatile, just like a little strip piece, uh, whichever that you, <coughs> prefer. Um, so I'll show you how to finish the bottom off now. So now that these beads are secured, I could use a little drop of super glue as well just to get it super secure, cut off the thread because you don't need these threads anymore. But then when it comes to finishing it off, there's a couple of different knots I'll show you. So the easiest one, of course, is the same as what I did at the beginning, which is just Let's get this out of the way so that the screen won't look so dark anymore, hopefully. There we go. So the first knot, which is definitely the easiest, which you want to position everything, make sure it's all firm, looking good, is then hold. Um, yeah, so here we go. It's... No, I want to... I want to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and get the 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 exact link if I can if I can find that one so I'll just tie this little knot just here so you can see it's coming here hold this and loop around try and keep them sitting neatly side by side and then you go up and through there and as you pull it tight Try and ease it towards your work so that it will sit nice and neatly. And you want to try and get it as close as you can, pulling both threads towards that last little bead. So edge it, edge it, edge it, little by little, pulling it towards that last little piece, that last little bead. And there, it should sit fairly nicely as close as you can get it to that last little end bead as well. So that gives you, that's one style of knot. There's quite a few others that you can do, which uh, because what you would do here, this is sort of finished now. If you wanted to leave a little space enough for your little button to go through, you can sort of tie the same knot again. You just leave a small space enough for your, um, button to pass through and you tie the same knot again and again otherwise there is another knot that i'll show you which i quite like i think it's a, a fun little knot and i'll do it with with this little piece here so you save yourself a little space lay your two threads it's called a barrel knot this one which i think looks really really cool uh, you lay your two threads side by side you take the one on the bottom and one on the top the one on the top you take it over behind your finger like that Wrap it once, but make sure you're going towards the side of your bracelet. So you can see my bracelet's down here. So you go over the top once, twice, three times, and just edge it off of your finger. Pull a little bit tighter if you can. It's a, a fiddly knot, this one, the very first time. But essentially, you just pull, 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 and then tuck this end in through your three pieces. So hold it here. So there's my, my three lines. Here's that end, go underneath and inside of this little knot and try and keep it all neat. And then as you pull the two sides apart, little by little, try and get it to stay nice and neat. Little by little by little, pull little, just a little, pull the other one a little slide it all the way down until eventually you can just get it coming all the way through wait a minute and it creates this super cute little knot just here that see that there's your little barrel and so it wraps around there it is it's a, a little fiddly you've got to try and do it a bit slowly 
so that it fits really, really well. And then eventually you have that beautiful little piece. If it's a little too long, which I left mine probably a bit too long, you can just tuck the thread back inside, loosen the knot, and just sort of ease it upwards towards the end where you're sort of going to. So just little by little slide it up and then thread a bit more of this base piece through and pull this thread again, slide it up, pull a bit more through and slide it up. And then eventually you'll see it'll fit there we go, now it's much closer. Nicely in position, right where I need it to be. You can do a couple of these if you want, if you want to have multiple different size fits. Let's just pull this thread once more, get it really firm, looking really nice and neat. There we go. And there you go, you can see it will sit looking really nice. It's a really nice, neat little knot. And then your clasp will bend around and inside that little loop piece just there. Um, Kaylee says, could you do macrame knots? Yes, you can, of course, whichever whichever you prefer, it's entirely up to you. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So you can see your little knot fits in there. You can just use a teeny weeny bit of glue once you've got this in position, maybe like a, a rubberized sort of glue or a super glue or something like that. And then just sort of fit it inside of that knot, get it secured, do the same again with like a second knot and then uh, more or less just with a pair of scissors once you've finished uh, leaving a very small little tail which I'll take this one off so that you can see it more closely so here we go actually I've got this nice blue one which you'll see you can see you can do even a few knots if you want to so that you've got variable sizes so if it's for someone with a small wrist they can use this one Someone with a medium wrist, it can go in there. A bigger wrist, it can go in here. So it fits whomever. Uh, it's like an adjustable size little piece. And then like I said, this little end tail, you can cut it shorter if you want to, but essentially you just use it, leave it as a little decorative thing, more or less. Um, but yeah, it's a, a fun, simple, easy little design that you can make. You can sort of play with it, make it really versatile, do thin ones, you can do thicker ones, you can do the triple width ones as well. Uh, there's a lot of different um, ways that you can use it. Um, here we go. Uh, I, I assume this was about that little barrel knot. Would a tube work better? Yes, you can use a tube as well, because obviously if you use like a pencil maybe, um, when you're making the barrel knot, where have I put it? Here it is. When you're making this little barrel knot here, uh, if you have a tube inside, obviously it's a bit easier because it's not as thick as your finger. You can just slide it out. Um, but yeah, that is uh, a little suggestion there. Um, I'm going to stick in to... Um, the comments, the the video uh, of the other different um, triple bracelet. So I'm just typing just here. So yeah, once I've finished this, this is what I'm. Uh, this is the video for for this triple bracelet. I'll just find the link for you. Uh, here we go. I've got the link. Just give me a few seconds. There we go, and I'll put it into the comments for everyone. Here it is, so you can watch that. Just uh, now that I've, I've pretty much finished, I've popped that into the comments, so if you're watching there, uh, if you're on Facebook, it should be down below. If you're on YouTube, it'll have come up on the right or anything. I'll also put it in the comments of the actual video itself. So if you want to uh, continue with the tuition on what you can do with this glorious little kit that we've got here, which again, it does come in those three colors. It is um, more than 20% off. You can make up to eight projects. So it does work out around about three pounds a bracelet or actually less, I would think. Um, at the at the discount price, it's yeah about two pounds seventy maybe per per little project. So something like this, two pounds seventy. Something like this, you know, two pounds seventy. If you were going to make eight different projects, um, 
So very, very inexpensive. Um, hopefully, you've sort of had a bit of fun, uh, learnt some some good things today. But like I said, yeah, ch check out the link that I've just posted at the bottom. Um, I'll see if I can pin it, uh, and then have a look and a bit of a watch. There's, that'll give you an extra half an hour or something to, to watch along on things that you can make, uh, making that really gorgeous little design. Uh, but anyway, I hope you've had lots of fun watching today's tutorial. I'm gonna head off and have my Easter long weekend soon, I think. Um, let's see, wait a minute. No, I don't think I've got any questions or anything. Lots of people have been commenting away about all sorts of things. It's uh, difficult to keep track of everybody's conversations, but uh, it's always fun when you guys are joining in and commenting away. Obviously, I'll be back next week. Um, I'll definitely be on on Friday. Again, the, the reason the, the background is a bit different here today. Uh, we had the, the loud building work going on in the house um, today so uh, things were a little loud hammering and tonging and things and with Jermaine of course still recovering I thought it would just be easier to record over here instead but uh, yeah so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial I should be able to be back in uh, at the usual in the bead den uh, for next week I will be for Friday I'm pretty sure uh, but yeah so we'll see um, you guys next week there should be at least one or two videos I would think definitely the one live video on Friday but um, otherwise on Wednesday I'll do a pre-record or maybe I'll do another live we'll see um, but yeah lots and lots of things planned I hope you enjoyed it have fun with a bit of leather um, and I guess I will see you all next week. I hope you have a lovely Easter um, with your family or, or not or, you know, but I hope it's a, a lovely time having a bit of a, a rest and relaxation, enjoying a bit of tasty food maybe, hopefully. Um, having a, a lovely little weekend off. That's what I'll be doing. Um, but yeah, thank you very, very much for joining me and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.